Good evening, everybody, and Shabbat Shalom. Let us start this evening's teachings with a prayer. Dear O Lord, Heavenly Father, as we are gathered in your house here this evening, O Lord, it is Shabbat, and let us be reminded that it is your day, the day you have chosen, and you gave it to us. And O Lord, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have lifted us up out of the dregs that we were and made us the people we are today. In your holy name, Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen. Well, now, before this whole thing started, I had 13 pages. Well, somewhere in the middle of the week, God woke me up about 12.30, midnight, 30, not 12.30 in the daytime. No, it was midnight, 30. And he says, I got a new word for you. And I got up, and I went in there, and I says, oh, okay, here's all the work I've done, Lord. You know, and he says, ah, Dad, put it aside. Tonight's lesson is, what does God want from us? What does he expect from us? First, God wants each of us to be saved. To have salvation through his son, Yeshua, or Jesus. Next, he wants us to be faithful. Faithful to him and not to have other gods before him. Other gods can be anything that takes you away from him. Such as sports. Music, cars, money, and such things that would cause you to take away from our God. God wants to hear from you. And he does this through prayer. Your prayer. Your prayer can be in depth or it can be as simple as asking for a parking space. God wants to talk with you. And the only way he can do this is for you to have a close relationship with him. Just last week, and now it's been like two weeks, uh, Joy Behar on The View said, It's okay to talk to God, but if he talks to you, it's mental illness. It's obvious that she has no relationship with God. And that's too bad. Because God talks to me every day. Sometimes I might not want to hear what he has to say, but he talks to me every day. And I'm glad for that. Last week... A young man went into a high school and this young man's mother had just died a couple of months before and as he walked into this school he killed 17 people and wounded many others it's obvious he did not know God and what do we expect they took God out of our schools and they often promote socialism the whole generation is lost, and this is our fault, no one else's. We let it happen, and now we're paying for it. We allowed them to do these things. We allowed them to take the Ten Commandments out of the hospital, out of the schools, out of the courts. We allowed them to take everything that resembled God out of our way of life. And now we are paying for it. A whole generation lost. So what can we do about it now? Many of these young people eat Tide soap pods. Why? Because they think it's candy? No. Because they've been told it's cool. Or you can get high. But the real reason is they don't know God and that again is our fault. Yours and mine. God's commandment is do not murder. And that's a, that's a strong commandment. A lot of people say do not kill. Thou shalt not kill. No, it's do not murder. Murder is taking of an innocent life. That's murder. Killing in defense, whether it's in the army or you're a cashier at a store and you're defending some your store you're defending something that's fine yes you can defend yourself god sees that but to go out and murder somebody just for the moment or pleasure if you can find any in that we project murder every day 
through video games, movies, music, and culture. We do this to them. We let them see these games. We let them play them. We show it in Hollywood movies. Very active murder situations. Yet, Hollywood stands up and says, ban the gun. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta go make another million. Make another movie, kill some more people, blood and guts. And we allow this to happen. Again, it is our fault. This culture, we must change it. We must bring God back into their lives, into our lives. We must be the examples that they don't have. We can develop a prayer and a worship time at home. And in our prayer book over there, congregants write their prayers. Nobody reads them. But every Thursday night at our prayer hour, we offer them up to God with the prayers that we had that evening. Every week, that book is not opened, but it's lifted up to God. God knows what every prayer was the moment you thought it. The moment you wrote it down on a piece of paper. He already knew what it was. We are only giving the act of giving it back to him and say, God, here's their prayers. Because we were the intercessors on Thursday night. This is one of the things that we do. We also have a couple of minutes of first fruits prayer on Shabbat service. Our rabbi tells us that first fruits prayer is so each one of us can have a few minutes to, to speak with God, just ourselves, him and us. And then we have a group prayer and then we start our services. For each of us to spend this time with God in his house, what a, what a thing, what a great thing. It doesn't matter how much time we have spent in prayer throughout the week. Prayer needs to be prayed discreetly. And not like the hypocrites who love to stand in the synagogue or on the street corners and pray to be heard and seen by people. And this is from Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. We must know God the Father and know Yeshua. So how do we come to know them? To put it in a simple word, that word is faith. In Hebrews 11, verse 6, For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he that is rewarded of them, that diligently seek him. God wants us to keep his commandments. John 14, verse 15, and in 1 John 5 and 3, God is consistent. I am the Lord. I change not. Malachi 3, verse 6. What he does not change either, remember, he said, they will be my people and I will be their God. What does God want from us? I will be their people. No, they will be my people. I will be their God. He wants to be our God. These are my mitzvot, or laws. He tells us to obey them, and the rewards are great. But to disobey them, then the punishment is death. Not just the physical death that we know, but the death of our souls. When God created us, he created us to worship him. And he gave us free will because he did not want robots. He did not want yes men or women. He wanted people, humans, to worship him for who and what he is, our God. But he wanted to have communion with us. He wanted to talk with us. He didn't just want to say, go do this, go do that. For he has angels that do that. When he wants something done, angel, he knows them by name. He calls them out and says, I need you to do this. Boom, and he's gone, does it. 
But with us, he wants it to be free will. He wants us to come to him and thank him for what he has done. Praise him in his glory. When we start our prayers, Yeshua taught us that. He said, you start your prayers. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Blessed are you, Lord. Yet we can talk to him just like I'm talking to you. He hears us. He listens to us. We don't have to be college graduates, PhDs. We can be high school dropouts. He doesn't care. What he cares about is each one of us. He cares about us physically. And he cares about us mentally. God created this earth. Can you imagine you know what did your parents teach you? Did they teach you not to run with sharp things in your hand? Yes. He, they did. And not to touch a hot stove? Yes. Did your parents love you and want you to be the best for you? Yes, that's why they taught us those things. So we wouldn't get hurt. Well, this is what God wants for you. And even more. He wants you to become like him. And live with him. And serve as his saints, kings, and priests. Over all the things that he has made. We only know of this earth. And this thing, place we call heaven. We look up in the night stars. This is all we know about. How much more did God make? How much more is unknown to us? That when we go to him, we will see the heavens in a far greater, greater than what we see here at night. You know? How great a thing to be with him. Sitting there as a king, as a priest. And that's all he wants. What more is there? What is there that he created that we don't know about? And all he wants from us is faith in him. Obey his laws and to love him. Yeshua... He gave us more information in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You simply cannot love God this deeply without knowing him and believing in him and obeying him. What God wants from us, he wants us to repent. Repent of our ways and our teachings. Oh, our teachings. Drugs are okay. Rape is okay. Even murder is okay. Stealing is okay. Everything's okay as long as you scream that you are the victim and the government owes you and you are not responsible. Do you remember the athletes that were in China that President Trump went over and rescued? Do you remember the father of one of those athletes? He couldn't understand what was wrong, why his son had stole something, shoplifted. And he couldn't understand why that was wrong. This is the father of a young man that the President of the United States just brought out of a country that will literally kill you for that. And this man couldn't understand it. Could not figure it out. Matter of fact, he said some pretty awful things about the president. Trump rescued them, <laughs> and one of their fathers just couldn't understand what good the President Trump had done. Hillary Clinton wrote a book, It Takes a Village. And actually, as much as I hate to say this, she was right, just not the way she wrote it. The village is us, is you and me. This is the village that it takes to raise people. 
to raise our children, to raise each other. When we have troubles, who do we go to? We go to each other. We have a prayer line. We call on the prayer line. We need prayer for this. We need prayer for that. We have testimony. God did this for me. Hallelujah. I'm happy. God did something for me. Let me, let me tell you about it. This is why we have testimonies. We are the ones that are responsible for letting all this happen. By not stopping it when it started. When the first person tried to start it, we didn't stop them. We did not protest in the streets. We didn't walk out there with signs and wave them. And we didn't curse and holler and scream. We sat quietly in our living rooms and we let it happen. God's holding us accountable. He wants us to repent. Remember that. We are now living in the times of Noah. And I want each of you to think about that for a minute. In the days of Noah, God was sitting up there looking down at the earth. And the earth was vile. Murder, rape, you name it, that's what was going on. Sacrificing their children to gods that didn't mean anything. They were stoned. And what are we doing today? Abortion. We're sacrificing our kids. We're allowing it to happen. And we've allowed it to happen for a very long time now. Almost 40 years. 70 million babies a year for 40 years. That's a lot of babies. That's a lot of souls. And that was all murder, every one of them. Those were innocent lives. Yes, we are living in the days of Noah. We sacrifice our children. We let them take God out of our schools, out of our courts, and by allowing the beliefs of foreigners. Yes, you remember not too long ago, they were teaching Islam in some of the schools, but you couldn't read the Bible. The music they hear, the games they play, the dope they take, even the riots they have without any punishment, no responsibilities. God wants us to repent for our sins and worship him and not some movie star or rap music or video game. We need to fast and that means skip a meal or two and seek God. We need to do this not just for ourselves but for all of humanity. How else can we turn this around? So my challenge to this congregation is let us start. Let us take one day a week and fast and pray. One day a week. Now I understand for medical reasons, some of us can't fast all day because we have medicines that we have to take with food and things like that. That's fine. Don't violate your medical situations. But just because you have to take a bite of food with your meds doesn't mean you have to break your fast. You continue and you pray. Pray to God. You can ex actually even start prayer groups in your home where two or three can meet during the daytime and have 30 minutes or an hour and have coffee and socialize but have a prayer group like our prayer group on Thursday nights. Our prayer group on Thursday night is not for ourselves. We are intercessors. We pray for other people. And at the end of that time, when we are through praying for other people in the prayer book, then we pray for each other that need prayers. Nobody leaves that hour without prayer if they need it. And this is what we need to do in our homes. We need to dedicate a place, a time. It doesn't have to be a whole big deal. One or two people. You can do it by yourself even. I want you to do one other thing. I want you to look around this congregation. Where are the young people? Where is the youth? Now Shabbat service on Saturday, tomorrow morning. It should be like today, but daytime tomorrow. 
Where is the young people? We used to have a few, quite a few as a matter of fact. But they slowly drifted away because we did not have a social program for them. They had to go someplace to where 16, 15, 14 year olds can communicate with other teenagers and be together with other teenagers. We need to do that again. We need to get the youth in here because all of you are pretty young. I'm not. I ain't going to live forever. Some of you I know are going to oh, good. <laughs> but no, seriously. We, we, need, we need to do that. As a congregation, we need to do it. And for humanity. For our country to repent and turn back to God. Yes, for we are in the days of Noah. And we are not Noah and his family. There's no ark. No giant flood that's going to come and kill everybody. It's going to be wars. Wars are violent. They're tragic. They're bloody. And they're painful. Rabbi talked about it earlier. Having been through one, you don't want to go through it. You do not want it on our streets. But if we don't change, it's coming. We are not holding God to the highest. Nor are we holding ourselves to the level that God wants us to. God will give us what we ask for in prayer. He says this in Matthew 21, chapter 21, 22. Verses 21, 22. As long as we have faith in him. That's his exact words. I will give you whatever you ask for. As long as you have faith. You have to trust me. If you don't trust me, you don't have faith in me, why should I do anything for you? Why should I give you what you want? You can't buy friendship. doesn't work. Our country tries that. We spend millions, billions of dollars. And then they protest in the streets, Kill America! Down with America! The great Satan! But we gave them billions of dollars. You can't buy friendship. You can't buy it. Their trust is in the dollar bill. So we can't buy it either. We could walk up and down the streets throwing hundred dollar bills down. And not one person would follow us into the church. They would wait for us to come back out and throw some more hundred dollar bills down. We can have in home prayer groups. We can fast. And we can start a youth program. Now, I don't know how we can do these things. Someone asked me not too long ago, how often do I pray a day? I can't tell you. I don't keep track. I talk to God probably a hundred times a day. I thank him for a parking space. I pull my car up there and I park it in the parking space. I well, thank you, Lord. I appreciate that. I get in my car and I'm going home. And something happens. And sometimes I grit my teeth. Sometimes I slip up and say something. But then I say, God, forgive me. I don't mean anything towards that person. I don't even know who that is. Forgive me for getting angry. Forgive me for what I have done. I forgive them. They didn't mean anything. I had a guy tonight. Traffic was bocking up where all the detour is. And I turned my turn signal on to change lanes to get out. I looked in my mirror. And nobody was behind me. Nobody was in that lane. So I started to come out. The guy right behind me jumped out. Boom. 
So I real quickly came back in the lane I was in. I said, you know, God be with him because he's not going to make too many more of these or somebody has an accident. And he even ran three red lights while I was with him. As you say, while I was with him, he would run this light but get caught in the next one. I would get up to him in the next one. And then we'd go through the green. The next one he would run. It was yellow. It was a solid yellow, hard yellow. It was red before he got through it. You're not going to do that too often before somebody runs into you. It's just a matter of time. But, you know, it didn't bother me when he jumped out in front of me. I just had to whip back in my lane. No big deal. It didn't cost me any time. I stayed side by side for five or six blocks. What, he, what did he gain? I don't know. Oh, I got ahead of him. Only till the next block. <laughs> you know, here I am. Hi. <laughs> but that's the point. That's the point. Just forgive them and get on with your life. God wants you to repent of your sins. You'll worry about him later. Worry about him when time is really not that much of a situation. Judgment day. <laughs> You know, I want to read Psalms 46, three verses. God is our refuge, our strength, our ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we are unafraid, even if the earth gives way, even if the mountains tumble into the depths of the sea, even if its waters rage and foam, the mountains shake at its turbulence. We have God. And in our faith with him, we don't fear any of this. Because we know where we're going to be. And we hope we go there before all this happens. Our time is up tonight. But I want to thank all of you for being here. Because God told me to say these words. Because he's really interested in us. You, me, each one of us. These are the positions that he has put us in. He sees where we're at. And he knows how we have let him down. And all he asks for us is repent, repent. Please repent. The end's coming. The time is near. Repent. And worship me, God. That's all he wants. How simple is that? He gave us ten laws. Ten laws. Can you obey ten laws? Don't run red lights. Yeah, put God number one. You know, don't run stop signs. Yep. Put God number two. All the way down the line. There's only ten of them. And the ones that you can't, the ones you slip up and make a mistake and, and kind of cross over, God forgive me, I'm sorry. And he says, okay, I'll forgive you. Because you asked. Don't wait till you're dying. Don't wait till your last breath. It's, oh, wait a minute. Can you give me another second? I got one I just remembered. No. You want to stay on this side of repentance. Not on the other side. Because the other side, there's nothing you can do about it. When you take your last breath on this earth, you're taking your first breath in heaven. Remember that. When you exhale that last time, the next time you inhale, you're not here. And God wants you with him. He doesn't wait to the judgment day and say, well, let me get out the book here. What's your name? Uh, let me see. Uh, you find it? No. no. See if you can find his name in here. No, I don't find his name. There's a big smudge where I think it used to be. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> I don't 
mau chat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, we used to say this big hand comes down and squishy like a bug. Because you made me angry. <laughs> you know, and we used a different term, but yeah, same principle. Sorry, dude. <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> We, God wants us to be his children. He wants us to be his priests, his kings, his ministers. Every one of us. You don't have to go to college like a lot of our good friends did and get licenses. All you got to do is love him. Follow him. Obey him. Put him first. Put his laws first. That's all he has. The ones that did go to these schools, colleges, and get all these documents and everything, he's pleased with them too. You think, I want to use you now. While you're down there, you're going to do this, and you're going to go there. You know? And that's great. I'm glad he can use them. Our time is up, really. So, we got an offering to go, and then we got prayer. So, I'd like to close with just a little quick prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time that you have given me to be with my congregation. Oh, Lord, I hope that I presented your words to them in a manner that you would accept. For this, oh, Lord, is your words, your time. And, Lord, Heavenly Father, I am for gratefully, eternally grateful with you, oh, Lord. Blessed be the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, and in his name, amen.